Hello, this is Rick and thanks for joining. This is the Excel 2010 course. So today I'm going to talk about uh, how to link between worksheets and workbooks. And then I'm also going to have a, a very quick wrap up here. So with that said, I just wanted to point out all of the materials will be posted on my website, which is www.10minutetrain.com. And then you can also go to the um, YouTube channel, which is here, youtube.com forward slash 10 minute train. And then here's um, some other links that may be helpful, like a blog and so forth. Um, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and jump right into the um, workbook uh, linking here. So what I've done here is I've created a, a couple different worksheets. And these will all be available for download, so you can use them for reference on the website. So with that said, I've got an actual versus forecast here. So I've got salespeople's names um, and then the months of the year. And you can see right now it's blank. But then what I've done, whoop, I didn't mean to do that. Let me undo that. Uh, I have a sales forecast tab. So Logan is supposed to have 15,000 in sales every month until October. And then they go to 16,000. And so depending on the user, maybe this is a new user, so they're ramping up slowly over time. Um, so those are their sales forecast. Then over here in the sales total spreadsheet, I've got a list of their actual sales right here. So with that said, you probably want some sort of a quick and easy way to do a metric um, to see where the salespeople stand at. So in this case, we're going to have to take a formula and put it here on this sheet here in this column right here. We'll start with Logan and we'll say equals what are their total sales minus the forecast so their total sales are listed on the sales total sheet right here and I'm gonna go ahead and click that cell and I'm gonna hit the minus sign and then what do I want to do I want to go to the sales forecast work sheet sorry I want to go to the sales forecast worksheet and go ahead and click the sales forecast and then I can hit return now you'll notice I've taken their sales totals from the sales total spreadsheet and I've subtracted out the sales forecast and you can see they're $12,865 above the forecast. So now what I can do is I can just extrapolate that out. I can just copy that formula over and you see it will fill it in for every month. You can see Logan does very good every month until you get to July and August to mid-year here. They don't seem to be uh, doing as well. You can also take this and you can put in a percentage uh, over percentage under uh, if you want to put in a, in a percentage so you just put that in the formula so you'll notice here if you're manually working on these to link to a different worksheet in the same workbook this is the formula that the references that you use you say equals worksheet name exclamation point and then the cell address so if we go here you'll notice equals sales totals which is this tab right here exclamation point C2 and then what do we do from there we say minus and then we go to the sales forecast worksheet which is right here you'll notice the um, single quotation marks right here um, around the sales totals and sales forecast that's because there's a space between sales and totals down here in sales and forecast if there was no space there let's assume this was called sales you would not need those single quotes and it would just it would just look like let's assume it was called sales well, I'll, I'll do it like this without it I'll do sales you, you see what will happen it will not work without the quotes so if I do sales totals type that, do that again, sorry sales totals and hit return I get an error okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fix that I put in the single quotes so that's only needed if there's a space in the name otherwise it would work fine so that's how you would link to another workbook uh, an, sorry another worksheet within the same workbook okay so now in order to reference the workbook um, another workbook not within this one that's running I'm going to do equals I'm going to go over here to switch windows under the view tab I'm going to go to sheet number two and I'm going to choose this cell here and that cell is going to be um, C2 alright so now I'm going to go ahead and say minus and now I'm going to switch windows again 
and I am going to go back to sheet number one and then I'm going to go to sales forecast and I'm going to choose the sales forecast in cell C4 okay so now what I do is I can copy that out and replicate that out one thing you'll notice over here when I link to another workbook it put the dollar symbols in front of the um, cell reference and that's always going to be referencing that cell C2 if I copy that anywhere I don't want that to happen in this case so I would get rid of that if I wanted to replicate it right so now for example if I went to oh, I need to do that that okay so now I take this cell now if I want to reference it over, now if I want to copy it over I can copy it over this way and now you see what will happen I'll go from cell C2 minus C4 and now I should go D2 minus D4 E2 minus E4 and so that matches up because this one actually starts down here on row 4 and if I go to the other sheet it should be row row 2 so that's our, so that's how that works so I'm going to go back to sheet 1 again I want to make a, a note here and show you the form the format for this if you're pulling from a different work sheet in a separate running workbook the formula is right here equals workbook name dot xlsx in this case and then close the brackets and then worksheet name exclamation point and then your cell address alright so you can manually type that out and of course but if you click on it will do it automatically now you might have another workbook example where you have a separate closed workbook and how you do that is you reference where it is so this could be a network drive or the hard drive so this would come in very handy if someone else a whole other department was updating a sheet and you needed to reference it you would obviously need access to where that sheet was um, on like a network drive or something like that but what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and do that as an example here and what I will do here, I've got that sheet up so I'm going to use it just for reference for a minute so I'm going to go ahead and highlight highlight that cell right there and then I'm going to say minus, so I'm going to switch windows again and now I'm going to go to my sheet one again and now I'm going to go to sales forecast and I'm going to say uh, I'm going to click on that cell right there C4 and I'm going to hit return and I, I put a really large number in that I'll go back to that to show that to you I put a really large number here for January for Logan just so it would be easy to uh, spot the difference okay so you see they're 85,000 above their target and now you can see it did it as if it's another running workbook so what I want to do here and the name of that workbook is Excel 2010 week 8 link sheet closed workbook dot xlsx and I have the parentheses in the title there that's not that's not a special formula or anything special format or anything so now what I would want to do I did put that in the temp directory so under on my C drive so now I'm going to do C colon temp backslash and then I've got my workbook name and my well actually I'm missing something actually that no that's good right there let me do let me move the single quote right here I'll get rid of this one and now I'm going to close that sorry about that let me switch windows I'm gonna go ahead and close this sheet and I am going to go back here and hit return and now you see it pulled it from that sheet and it's at 85,000 same thing here again keep in mind this uh, made this a constant reference to C2 which you probably want to remove the dollar symbols depending on what you were referencing so that's what I wanted to share with you today um, the other thing is just a quick reminder you don't need the single quotes I put a note down here about it I'll fill this in with this formula right here for the same worksheet just so you can see it as a reference Oh, and then finally what I want to share with you is I'm going to go ahead and pull up the website here. So what we've done in the class so far, and, and this is the final week, so we've, we've basically started from scratch, with, you know, how to start Excel, how to create a shortcut. We talked about the ribbon. We talked about the quick access toolbar, how to save files, open files. Created a very basic spreadsheet. Created, made um, tables. We filtered. 
um, worked on some shortcut keys, we worked on formatting and editing, and um, all the way through, you know, we got more intermediate here, we worked with formulas, um, then intermediate Excel, then we talked about drawing, filtering and sorting, and then finally um, pivot tables and kind of a wrap up today, um, and included the linking the workbooks and worksheets here. So you'll notice here, um, week eight will be added pretty soon. Um, but under the, if you go to the, my site and then go to the Excel tab, uh, you'll see this Excel 2010 class for beginners. All the classes will be listed out and there'll be supporting files for every week um, that you can, <coughs> excuse me, that you can download. And the other thing that I'll do, I started in week four, I started putting parentheses over here, the topic or the main topic for the, um, for that um, lesson. So I'm going to go back and edit these so they'll be on here. So it's a little be a little bit easier of a reference for you. So, anyways, thanks for joining, and I really uh, appreciate you uh, um, signing up and viewing the tutorials. And thanks a lot. Take care.